um, please make sure that what you're going to do is at the top in the search bar where it says search Facebook, please just make sure you type in create page. It's going to give you various options here. You're going to click on create page. And then from here, select an option. Generally, most people do it as a local business or as a company. And then from there, you'll be able to go through the rest of the steps. I'm not gonna go through the rest of the steps with you because quite frankly, I don't need to create any additional Facebook pages. Now, with that being said, I will show you now the basics, how to actually post onto Facebook. I will show you, if you're posting on your Facebook business page, how you have the ability to boost a post. And then the last thing I'll show you is how to actually create your very own ad campaign. Now, when you go onto your business page, all you're going to do is go to the business page. Now, down here, you're gonna see an option where it's gonna say write something. If you used to have a business page or you have one and you haven't used it in a while, the page looks very different now. So you have the ability to share a photo, video, etc. Now, what things are you gonna post? Honestly, you guys can post links for different, um, different changes that are happening in the market. If you have a new listing, you can post the link there. If you have an open house, you can also use that option. Now, generally you guys wanna do stuff that has to relate to a listing that you have, so that's what I will show you. Uh, so in case that's what you're doing, make sure you go onto your website. From your website, find the link that you want. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna choose this link. I wanna make sure I'm advertising this specific property. So when people come onto my website, I wanna make sure that they're taken directly to the featured property. Now, how do I get a link for this property? Super easy, I'm gonna click on more details and it's gonna take me to the actual property. From here, you're gonna notice at the very, very top, there is a link and this is the designated link for this specific property. So all I'm gonna do is copy that. I'll go back into Facebook. And from here where it says write something, all I'm gonna do is right click. And I'm gonna click as paste. Now as I'm doing paste, you're gonna see that I'm gonna wait a little bit and then Facebook has gone ahead and selected and pulled that URL. If you notice that an image has not been uploaded, what you can do is just close that screen and exit that and then try it again. Sometimes Facebook is weird like that. And you'll see this time it has actually pulled the picture. So the lack of it pulling a picture in the very first uh, attempt has nothing to do with agent locator. It has everything to do with Facebook. Now someone just joined in, so I gotta make sure I mute them. And we're good to go. So you're gonna be able to see it's now pulled the image link, which is perfect. If you wanna have more images attached with this posting, so you wanna have the website visitor or your Facebook visitor be able to navigate through different photos, all you're gonna do at the bottom here is you'll see a plus sign. It'll automatically take you to your computer and then you can just select additional photos for it. I will tell you this though, um, from the research that I've done, the single photo always does better. Now, you're going to notice because it's already pulled the URL, I don't really need the URL, nor do I want that URL to show up in my actual Facebook posting. So what I'm going to do is I highlight it, I click on delete, and I now have the ability to write whatever I want. So I'm just going to say uh, brand new detached home in Danforth Village. Join me at the open house this weekend and I would click on publish. Now you'll see that the post has now been published and you would be good to go. Now with the actual business page, you guys have the ability to boost the post. Now what does boosting the post do? Boosting the post allows you to target people who do not like your Facebook business page. Because as of right now, the only people who are going to ever see this post on your business page are those who have liked your page. 
Um, if you don't know how many people have liked your page, just go to the community, page, the community section on the side and you will be able to see that. Now to boost a post, all you do is click on boost post. What it's going to do is going to ask you, what would you like from, what is your objective from this post? In this case, my objective is websites visits. If you want to change that, go ahead and click on change and you can switch it. Um, if you are using a link 99% of the time, it is going to be a website visit. If you just want people to go to your Facebook business page, things of that nature, leave it on engagement. Next thing you have the ability to do is select what button is going to show up. You have the option to not have a button at all. Learn more is the option that's there. If you want to change that, go ahead and choose one of these different options. Now it's going to say, who are my audience? It's people who I'm choosing through my targeting. If you want to go ahead, you can go ahead and edit that and specify who your audience is. So what is the gender you're using? What is the age that you're using? To me, I'm going to move this over, let's say, to 30. Um, now it's going to ask you for a location. It's automatically giving me people in Canada. Is that what I want? I do want people in Canada, but I probably also want people a little bit closer to that area since it is a proven fact that people like to move within seven kilometers of where they currently live. Now you'll see if I put in East York, it's not coming up. You can try in different communities. I will tell you it's not gonna be as wonderful, so you're better off just clicking on Toronto as an option. Select Toronto, Ontario from your drop-down menu. You're gonna see that it has zeroed in on that area. It also is going to give you a radius selection, so you have the ability to switch that selection if you want, so if you want it to be greater or less than, again, totally, totally up to you. Now, with that being said, we now have the ability to target specific things. If you are in real estate and you are posting a home, please do not include realtors in your ads. Make sure it is just the general public. So how do you exclude people? You're going to choose exclude and then choose whether you wanted to do that their education is from ORIA or which board membership that they are, you can exclude people. If you're looking for specific demographics, so maybe the area that you have is a bungalow and you know generally it's retired people, you can choose specific demographics that way. Definitely, I would have changed the age range. Um, you can choose whether the interest is family, so there's so many different options for you. Um, if you don't have a specific target area or target, sorry, not target area, but target market, please leave the detail targeting alone. Don't even mess with it. Just leave that alone. As you scroll down, it's going to show you how many people your, art, your ad is going to target. In this case, I'm targeting about 2.4 million um, people, it's letting me know my selection is great. You're going to see a gauge over here. It's going to let you know if you're too specific or if you're too broad. So make sure you're always in this green section. Once you're done, go ahead and click on save. Now down here, it's going to ask you for your budget and the duration. So how long is the ad going and how much am I spending? First thing it's always a good idea to do is to go in and specify what your budget is. So you can choose one of the budgets that they've given you. You can click on choose your own and specify what you're doing. Now you want to also go with the duration. So if I select 14 days, keep in mind my total budget has remained the same and down below it's letting me know how much I'm spending per day. If Facebook does not think that your budget is a good amount, it is going to give you an, a suggestion. So I'm going to say increase to $30 and then it'll tell, give you an update. Let's say if I wanted to put $260 for 14 days and you'll notice it's telling me how many people is my estimated reach. Please keep in mind the more you spend um, per day, the better off your ad is going to do. Then it's going to ask me for tracking conversions in this case because I do want to track people who are going to the website. I'm going to use a Facebook pixel. If you don't want to track it, just shut that off. No big deal. If you've never done a Facebook pixel, it's going to give you other um, options. Now, when you have a Facebook pixel, that pixel, that pixel has to be sent 
or added on to your website. Now, I have actually spoken to um, Facebook and what Facebook suggested is that whenever you want to add in a pixel, um, you're going to add it in a section called the before head code. Now, how do you do that? Once you're in your CRM system, you need to go to websites. You're going to click on your domain name. Let's try that again. Normally it won't ask you for your logins, but it is for mine because I am in private browsing. Now it won't let me go, guys. Let's try this. So you'll see I'm in it. When you get here, it's gonna automatically take you to this website screen. And what you're gonna do is on the left-hand side, go to global content. Once you're on global content, the very first section here you're gonna see is your before head code. So what you wanna do is click on edit, click on source, and then enter or paste the coding, the pixel code that Facebook gives you. Once that's done, you are good to go. Note if this is the first time that you're adding the pixel there, it's going to have a red dot. So don't worry about that. It just means it's not an active pixel. Why wouldn't it be an active pixel? Because it hasn't tracked any conversions yet. So don't worry about that. Once it's been put onto your website and it gets used, it'll switch to green. Once you're done, all you want to do now is click on boost in the lower right hand corner. And you are done with boosting a post. I obviously don't want to boost it, so I'm going to cancel it. I obviously don't want this to actually show up on my business page, so I'm going to also delete that Facebook post as well. Now, before I go on to an ad campaign, does anybody have any questions in regards to boosting a post or just a general Facebook post? Um, if you do, please use the chat function. Um, you have the ability to send the message to everybody so everyone can see your question or you can send it to me privately. So I'll just give you guys another second, another 20 seconds or so just to make sure. The Facebook um, pixel, because it's on the before head code, it is going to track um, according to the website because it's part of the whole website as opposed to a specific page. And today's session is recorded, so after today's session, I'm manually going to email you guys out with a copy of the recording um, for you to look at any time. Um, if you want to act, add the pixel code just to one specific page, then my suggestion to you um, is to contact our support department because they actually have access to get into other sections of your website that I don't have access to. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, support's email address is support at agentlocator.ca. If you want to call them, their phone number is 905-712-1001. Um, it is always faster. It's actually better if you do a support ticket because then they can send it to the designated support staffer who deals with um, Facebook and the coding stuff. All right, guys, now I'm going to get on to creating an ad campaign. So this is what the majority of people use um, to drive traffic to their website and to get leads on Facebook. Now, there's two ways to get to your campaign. If you've done campaigns before, you can go back to your home page. And you're going to see ads manager on the left. If you've never done an ad campaign before, then what you need to do is click onto the down arrow um, right beside your log where you can log out. And you're going to see there's an option to create an ad. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create an ad. Now, what ad do I want to do today? 
I want to create an ad that is specifically for buyers and I want to take them to my buyer um, a community page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back home. So where do I want to drive traffic to? I am going to choose my Brampton Homes. Oh no, I am going to choose, yeah, I'll do that one. Brampton Homes under 500,000. So in Brampton, there is 227 properties that are listed for under $500,000, which is good for me. Now I'm going to go right back into my ads manager and it's going to say to me, what is your objective? So what does that mean? What do I want as my goal when I do this Facebook ad? Am I doing brand awareness and reach? Really, if you're doing brand awareness or reach, it's generally going to take people just to your Facebook business page. That's it. You don't expect any type of engagement, shares, like, etc. All you're doing is letting them know that you exist. I if that's what you want to go for. So if you're trying to build up your likes on your Facebook business page, awareness is the way to go. Consideration. So what are people doing with consideration? Um, definitely they're using traffic. They're definitely using engagement. They can choose to do a video view. So if you have an open house and you have a virtual tour or something of that nature, go ahead and do video views. If you have a testimonial and you're trying to get more traffic or more listings in that area, you can always use that as well. And then lead generation. Now I'm going to be honest, guys, generally most people um, will use traffic and engagement from this um, option. There's also conversion, and then most people in this case are using conversions. Now I have been researching Facebook a lot. I'm not going to get into anything today about the lead generation option, which is a lead form. I do need to learn more about it before I even train you guys on it. So in the upcoming Facebook training sessions, I will be going over that one. Again, I want to make sure I learn enough so I don't give you guys any incorrect information. Now, in this case, I want to do um, send people to, my, to a listing page um, that I have. So I could use traffic and I could use conversions. Um, honestly, either or works for you. I'm going to use conversions. So I'm just going to click on conversions and it's going to let me know that I am creating a conversion campaign. The campaign name is automatically going to come up with the type of campaign you are doing. I have a habit of making sure that everything is dated. So I would do conversions and then put today's date. Um, I would also like to put in that I'm doing uh, listing search page so I know exactly what my campaign is and then I'm going to click on continue. Now from there it's going to go to the next step. It's going to have an ad set name. Usually I leave that alone, not even going to lie, don't play around with that at all. Now it's going to ask me what type of conversion am I doing and I have the ability to create a conversion event. So generally, if you've never done this before, this is gonna be blank, and what you're gonna do is click on define a new custom conversion. It's gonna automatically give you a Facebook pixel. If you guys don't have a Facebook pixel, let me see. You're gonna create one and it will create one for you. And it's gonna ask you what the URL contains or what the URL equals. So I'm gonna say the URL equals. I'm gonna take this URL here at the top and I'm gonna copy it. And that means I'm only doing traffic or conversions, targeting conversions from this specific URL. And then it's gonna go choose category and I'm gonna say that they have to complete the registration and then I'm gonna click on next. Now I have a, an option to create the conversion name. So I'm just gonna say Brampton Registrations. Now my names are all just what I use and how it organizes in my head, but it's up to you. And then you can set a conversion value if you want. You don't need to, I leave that blank. And I'm gonna click on create. So you're now gonna see that I've created a custom conversion and here I'm gonna click on done. So now I've gotta go in and find my Brampton one. So we'll see my Brampton registration is here. 
you'll notice again, like I said earlier, it's going to have a red dot and it now lets me know my custom conversion is not active. So how do I add this conversion in? I'm going to click on view pixel. It gives you other information. So if you want to know a lot more, you can choose that option and then click on email pixel code. If you are not comfortable with doing this yourself, please add support at Agent Locator into the mail recipient. If you're comfortable, you honestly can just take this code here and copy it. And then you'll see I go back into my backend system. I'm in the beforehead code. I'm going to click on edit. I click on source and I'm just going to paste that code there and I click on save. Now I'm good to go. I can close this screen. It's still going to show up as red because nothing has happened with it, so don't worry about that at all. Now from here, I am gonna go ahead. If I have an offer, use an offer. I don't have an offer because this is real estate. If it was something else, more than likely you would. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create an audience. So what audience do I want to create? I do want to designate a specific area. I do want to do Brampton as my target area, as I feel that people in Brampton will move in Brampton. It is going to highlight some other areas, which is fine. Some people from Mississauga, Oakville, Burlington, maybe Milton, et cetera, may be going into Brampton as well. You, like I said earlier, you do have the ability to switch the, the radius, so I can go lower than that if I want. Um, and then just keep in mind my potential reach changes according to the target area. You can go wider if you want as well, totally up to you. Now you're going to put in the age range. So if I'm looking for somebody who's looking under 500,000, because that's the page that I'm taking them to, they most likely can be a downsizer or they might be a first time buyer. So I'm going to think, and this is just my own knowledge. I think that first-time buyers will be 28 and a little bit older. So I'll leave that there. Gender, and typically you're going to always select all. You can designate men and women depending on uh, what you think will get you better results. But pretty much you're okay um, with doing all. If you speak an additional language, please go ahead and enter that one in. Again, we can do detailed targeting. We can ex exclude people just like I showed you with the boost. Now, you have the ability to select a connection type if you want. You don't have to. Um, when you go into connection type, it's going to give you a bunch of different options. So let's say I want to go into my Facebook page, but I want to exclude people who like my page. So it means I only want to target people who don't like my Facebook page. And then you'll choose that one. When you're done, make sure you go ahead and save the audience. And I'm just going to say Buyer Brampton July 7th. Again, saving the audience and naming it. Make sure it, it makes sense to you. Don't, you don't have to do it the way that I am doing it. Now, after I've gone ahead and done all of that, and you'll notice that the system keeps like pulling the page down, but you're going to have to scroll up because after we've done the audience, we have the conversion, we have the audience. The next thing we want to do is the placements. Where do I want my ad to go? You can do it as automatic where Facebook designates where it goes, or you can go to edit placements if you want and specify where it's going to go. Um, so let's say I do want it to go onto Facebook. You'll see all of the different options are here. And it shows you all of the different ones. You can do Instagram. So if you guys don't know, Facebook and Instagram are connected. If you do Instagram, you have the ability to connect that account. And you can do an audience, net, net, audience uh, network if you want as well. In this case, I'm just going to leave every, everything alone. I'll put it back to automatic. But if you have specific things that you want to do, by all means, go ahead. If you're unsure, leave it alone. Next thing we want to do is our budget and our schedule. Now, I honestly believe right away, instead of choosing a daily budget, make sure you do a lifetime budget. That way you're never going to make an error with how much you're spending. So I've gone ahead. I'll do a lifetime budget. It automatically will schedule it out for a month. And from here, you can go ahead and switch how long it is for. So for example, 
I mean, really a listing search page that really could go on for a month. There's no problem with that. If it's a listing, do I want it to go on for a month? If I'm promoting a listing, probably not. Maybe the first two weeks or so. Um, if it's an open house, I'm probably just going to have it running for a couple of days, right? So if I have an open house on the weekend, I'll probably do the, um, the ad from the Thursday to the Sunday. Maybe not even the Sunday because maybe the Saturday, thinking that people will already have it organized for Sunday. So again, totally up to you, um, depending on what you're targeting. Now here it says optimize for delivery. We do have it set to conversions, which is what we want. We can be link clicks, but keep in mind it's gonna charge you per link um, click as opposed to the actual conversions. Then you're gonna have impressions. That means how many times your ad is shown, whether the person looks clicks on it or not. Now the conversion window. So let's say somebody looks at my ad, clicked on my ad today, but they didn't actually register or fill out any forms for a couple of days. That would that still con consist as a conversion to you? You have the ability to decide. Now bid amount, you can leave it as automatic. You can switch it to manual totally up to you. In this case, I usually leave it as automatic for until I start getting um, more comfortable with what the Facebook ads do. Now, the next thing you get to do is, am I running the ads all the time? So it is going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or am I doing it on a schedule? If you want to do it on a schedule, click on run ads on schedule, and it will now give you different options here. Now, what are the different options here? This is when do I want the ad to show up? You do, you can base it on their timeline, or you can base it on your, uh, your, your time frame. Now, when you're doing this, you're selecting off the times you want it to show up. So I know personally, a lot of leads start looking at listings and such and add their online from 9 p.m. till about 12 a.m. So I want to highlight Monday to f every single day, actually, 9 p.m. all the way to midnight. Now, I can do it just up here or what I can do is I can deselect down here or in select from here. I also know like lots of people like to look at stuffing stuff in the afternoon. So I'm going to make sure that 12 p.m. is also selected. But I know people are on the internet all the time on the weekend. So I'm selecting all of those time frames on the weekend. And then maybe they're going to look at stuff before they start work as well. Then I'll select it that way. If you are unsure, then just keep it on at run ads all the time. You will be able to track later on with analytics when they're coming in. Now we've done that. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to continue. Now what are we doing? Now this is the stuff that you guys want to get to. This is the ad. So first thing it's going to say, what Facebook page are we connecting it to? If you have multiple pages, select the down arrow and select the correct one. If you have an Instagram account, you can it will connect automatically there. Um, if you don't have an Instagram account, let me see one that doesn't. Then it's going to let you know it doesn't have a proper account and you can click on add account. If you already have an existing Instagram account and you've never connected it before, check off add an existing account, add that information in. If you don't have an Instagram account and you want to create one, click on create new account and go from there. Next thing you're going to do is choose the format. So what type of image uh, visual aid do I want it to have? As I said, from what I've, I've learned, um, the single image does pretty well, especially in this case for a buyer search. If you want it to be a collection for a new listing, then collection would be a really good option. If you have a testimonial video, an open house video, you can also do the single video. The carousel doesn't do so well. I mean, it doesn't do horribly, but definitely the single image does better. Now, because you have an image in mind, if you have it on your computer, click on upload image and utilize that. If not, you can browse the, lab, the library of free images. In this case, I'm just going to choose any image right now. It has nothing to do with Brampton or what the actual ad is for. So I'm just going to choose an image. And keep in mind, guys, your image is of utmost importance. Um, that really will determine if people will like the ad, click on the ad, or ones that don't. So I've added an image in here. If Facebook doesn't like your 
your sizing, it will have a blue border around it and it will let you know to select a different one. Next thing you're gonna do is put in your destination. So again, we are going to copy that URL that we had on before and I'm gonna paste that in there. It will update it and now we have to do the headline. So keep in mind, depending on how people are looking at it, um, different stuff will pop up. There are different options. So the headline is what shows up down here. And the text is what shows up above. So I'm going to say... And you'll notice as I change them there, it's updating automatically on the ad itself. Now, definitely this text above the picture, this text below the picture and the image itself do make a huge difference on what works and what doesn't work. So if this is the first few times that you're doing it. I do recommend that you constant, um, not constantly, but um, each do an ad for like at a week at a time and then try different images and such to make sure that it you can really test it out and see what works best for you. Um, every target market is different. So I can't say specifically what images are the best ones to use. Now, definitely make sure that the, the line above the actual image and your headline is giving a proper call to action. I mean, in this case, search for listings in Brampton isn't a great call to action. Maybe search for listings in Brampton today um, is definitely better. It makes them do something today as opposed to thinking that they can do it later on. Now, the call to action button is there, which is learn more. Uh, you can leave it that way. You can choose no button. You can choose sign up. Really totally up to you. I'm going to choose it as sign up, and then you can go from there. The news feed description, that's what's going to show up down here. That only shows up on the desktop news feed. It doesn't show up everywhere, so don't worry too much about that. Now, it's giving you the display link. So right now, you're, sh you're seeing that it's populating with my uh, 5236 ALServer.2, my fake uh, URL. So if you don't like that, which I don't, and I want it to be a different display link, I'm going to say... Oh, one sec. Now it's giving me an error, guys. I can't spell right now. So it will give you that error, but don't worry, it's going to go away after you actually finish the full URL and you will see the updated URL there. Keep in mind when the, the app is already linked to a specific page, so you don't need to worry there. Now that's it. You're all done. You'll notice that it has now made my Facebook pixel green. So it has tracked that conversion pixel properly. And what I do suggest before you finish, go to review order and then double check everything. Make sure your ad placement's where you want. Most importantly, make sure your budget is what you want. I've had people who put like 350 thinking it was the lifetime budget and it ended up being the budget for the full day uh, for a daily budget. So make sure you double check that before you go further. And then when you're done, go ahead and place your order. If you need a change made, please go to edit order. So that's it, guys. If anyone has questions, let me know. As I said, I am recording today's session, and I will send you a copy of it each. Um, give me about an hour, because after today's session, I'm going to go and grab some lunch, and then I'll go in, and then I'll add it in, and I'll send it out to you guys. Um, at any time, if you guys need help, you can always reach out to support. You can also reach out to myself. My email address is rhea at agentlocator.ca. Um, for those of you who are interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one session um, with me, whether it be for the CRM system, whether it be for something else, 
meaning Facebook, it could be any of those things. If you want to do a one on one session with me, um, please feel free to use my calendar. I have access to a calendar. And you can just click on that link and it'll take you directly to my calendar and then you can find a slot that works best for your schedule. Why did I, so somebody's asking, why did I choose conversion instead of lead generation? I'm going to be quite honest that um, I've just, I've used lead generation before, didn't find that it worked well. I now hear it's working really, really well. Um, so I do want to make sure I train up a little bit more on it to give you guys the best advice possible when using it. Um, and in a couple of weeks, that's what I'll be doing. I'm hearing great things from the lead generation. Traffic, traffic, um, all traffic is going to do is just take people to your website. Um, can we guarantee that they're going to, that they're going to actually register? No, I can't. Um, so when I do traffic, I'm going to be charged for people who click on my link. Um, if you're unsure, honestly, guys, if you can do it and if it's, it's feasible in your financial budget, I would do one for each. I like the traffic one um, because I figure to myself that if I can just get people to the website, they'll register themselves. Um, with that being said, for those of you who are also doing tag mark tag marketing, traffic is a good option. It is a cheaper option than than conversion. Or we'll point that out. It is cheaper than conversion um, for the ads. But if you have tag marketing, once somebody comes to your website, they are going to be tagged and they're going to see your tag marketing advertisement for three months. So they can always click back onto the tag marketing ad and get back to your website at any time. Um, when you do conversions, conversions actually going to track the amount of people who have filled out those forms. And then you're going to get charged for those. And keep in mind that price point is going to be way, way higher than somebody just clicking on your link. So if, you're, if you don't really have a really good budget, um, then I would say go traffic. Um, if you have a financial but a really good budget and you're not really sure what to do, honestly, try both and then see what gives you the best results. But Facebook is a great way to drive traffic. Another good thing to do for those of you um, who haven't learned, every Monday I do training on Kijiji and I actually show you guys how to use Kijiji in order to drive traffic back to your website. Keep in mind, uh, Kijiji is free um, majority of the times. I will show you the different templates that I've used and I used successfully and actually got quite a few leads within one month from. Um, Benefit of Kijiji, it's free for the most part. Downfall on Kijiji, it is time consuming and you're going to put a lot of effort um, every single day, multiple times a day to get the leads. If you do Facebook, you're pretty good um, and you just set it and forget it. Now, your Facebook ad, um, so somebody's saying, Am I able to see the Facebook ad on my business page just like? the pay, post boosting? No, you will not. Um, post boosting means you've created a post and you're boosting it to people outside of your network. The Facebook ad is never going to show up on your business page. Um, your Facebook ad is what shows up. Let me exit this area. So Facebook ads show up over here on the right hand side. You'll notice in your news feed. So for example, this is a sponsored ad. You'll see the sponsored ads there. Those are Facebook campaigns. Those are not um, the boosting of the post. I mean, not that they're not the boost. The boosting of the post will go in those sections as well, but it just will not show up on your Facebook page. So don't expect it to show up on your business page if you're doing an ad campaign. I'll be honest, I do different things depending on what I'm doing. So if I'm doing like the street, the street match landing page, um, listing pages, I usually do a Facebook ad. If I have an open house or a new listing, because I'm, I want to create the post anyways, then I'll just go ahead and do the boosting. Um, with the face with the Facebook ad campaign, you have more control over what gets shown. Um, you have more control over. 
the actual conversion, um, you have more control over what text is on that ad. So that's why most people go that route. They have made changes to the boost. Like in the last month or so, you didn't have the ability to choose an objective. Um, in this case, now you do. So if you have a listing, I would say just boost it. It will go really well. Do an open house video. Um, it'll work a lot better. So thank you guys for attending. I look forward to talking to you guys all later. And again, for those of you who joined in on my webinar earlier, uh, I do apologize greatly. And I hope to hear from you guys to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and the, if, if you find guys that my calendar is too booked up and it's too far away to get an appointment, um, please go ahead and contact our other trainer. His name is Byron and he'll be able to help you guys out as well. Um, yes, I am going to send you guys out the video as soon as it's over. Um, give me about an hour because I am going to go grab lunch and then I will get that video processed and sent out. And also, guys, if you guys want to get a hold of me quicker and you're a Facebook user, please feel free to add me in um, as a friend. And you can just use the chat function because I usually have Facebook open because I keep an eye out on our Facebook group. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, please join our Facebook group. It's called Agent Locator Clients, no space between agent and locator. So thanks, guys. I look forward to hearing from you. Please email me if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to chat.